Voilà, buonasera a tutti o oh, buongiorno. Welcome everybody, benvenuti. Come state? My name is Manu Venditti and I'm here from Italy Medisi helping you out with the things that you find difficult. Buonasera a tutti. Today we have a oh, tonight. We have a Q&A session on something that I realized that nobody likes. I received hate mail about Italian prepositions. That's how bad they are and we'll try and make sense of them. So, can't see my forehead. That's no big loss. Don't worry about my forehead. Uh, buonasera a tutti. I see hundreds of people from all over the world, not just the States, which is really good because the time doesn't really favor other parts of the world. So grazie mille. So happy to be here. I'm excited to help you out with your questions. I saw a bunch of questions already. Today we're focusing on Italian prepositions though. I even prepared like a very rudimental slides. But um, if there's time, I will answer all sorts of questions. Now, I'm going to see, we have around 200 people between our YouTube channel, our Facebook page, and also we have guests from Vita Italia, a great program that is helping people like you move to Italy. And um, yeah, let's do this, let's do this. So I would say, hold off your questions until after I've given you my little introduction on Italian prepositions, because I'm not going to look at the, at the questions and you'll, you'll miss out. So let's start with the basics. Do we know what prepositions are? Let me know in the comments. Honestly, this is a, a very important question because we don't need to know the names of the things, but do we know what we talk about when we say Italian prepositions or prepositions in general? Because the beauty of this is that we, Italian and English, are very similar. So you have them in English, we have them in Italian, and in most cases, there's a one-on-one -on -one match. So I see a couple of no's. So prepositions are those little parts of the language that add meaning to a sentence. So you have your words, your nouns, the things you talk about, you know, coffee, table, you, me, those are the things. Then you have the verbs, you know, eat, go, sleep. And then the preposition makes a whole lot of difference. So what's the difference between uh, preparo la cena con te and preparo la cena per te? Same as English. I am preparing um, dinner with you or for you. Very different meaning. So that with and for, con and per, per are the prepositions. So that's what we are trying to do. Oh, Kim, that's a good, very good observation. Something you must not put, uh, you must not end a sentence with. And you just did that, right? Well done. So yes, in Italian especially, you will never end a sentence with a preposition, but that's more advanced. Let's get, let's look at the basics. So do you guys know what are, what Italian prepositions are? Let me be honest. Uh, in Italian, we distinguish between proper prepositions and a bunch of other prepositions that we never call prepositions, but they actually exist. So we're going to focus on the actual prepositions, but we'll talk about the other prepositions as well. So in the meantime, you can type your, um, you can type your messages both on Facebook, if you're watching this on Facebook or on YouTube, and I can see all of your comments. So either way, I will get to you. So Jennifer, D and da do my head in. There you go. You got three prepositions in the same sentence, right? D, da, in. D, da, per, a. Actually, we have... Uh, it doesn't work out. <laughs> you, can, you can read the questions uh, wherever you're at. So... Uh, the in a compare. Okay, so let me show you what we consider the Italian prepositions. And I'll give you a little trick, sorry. A little trick on how to remember them. And I'm not a singer and I'm pretty bad at even making a melody, but I will do this for you because that's how much I love you. So we have those prepositions, di, a, da, in, con, su, per, tra, fra. 
So that's what we consider the prepositions. We have other prepositions that we don't list them here because they're also adverbs. They're more complicated. Words like sopra, above, sotto, below, dentro, inside, fuori, outside. They're also prepositions, but they don't count. Okay, we, these are the hard ones. Let's be honest, these are the hard ones. But are they really that hard? Let's find out. So I will ask you one by one if you know the main meaning of each one of these prepositions. Because as much as you don't want to believe me, in most cases, most cases, in Italian, we will use the same preposition that you would use in English, in most cases. So what's D? Type in the comments, what is the meaning of D in English, I suppose. D equals of. So D, let me see if I can do this, of in English. Yeah, I see uh, somebody saying by, yeah, sometimes, but the main, the, main, the main translation of D is of. Good, let's go with the basic one today. Now, A. Qual è il significato di A? A renders what meaning? A renders two meanings in English. Two, but also another big one. Oh, oh you're all giving me two. There's another big one. At. At, yes. Then we have da. Da is very confusing, but what is the real meaning of da? From, yes, perfetto. From. In. This one is too easy. I won't even wait for you. <laughs> in is in. So in is in. Too easy. Con. Che significa con? So we'll get to the complicated part in a second. With. Su. Wow, so many good answers. Look at that. Look at that. Uh, if I can show you. Trrr, it's a shower of good answers. Su. Su, 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 su. On. Yes, on. Per. Per. Per, per, per. For. Yes, I'm getting for. And finally, tra or fra. And I'll get to them soon. What's the meaning of tra or fra? Well, among, between, amongst, any of those kind of meanings, right? So these are the core prepositions. And what I would like for you to do is always think that in most cases, if the preposition that you're using in English has the actual meaning of the preposition, chances are it will be the same in Italian. What do I mean? So in English, you have this horrible thing called phrasal verbs, which is when you take a verb and you add a preposition and the, out, the resulting meaning is totally different and crazy, which makes it really hard for non-English speakers to learn. But, it, but when I say, if you're using an English preposition with the actual meaning, like I'm buying a present for my sister, in Italian, you will say per, because you're buying it for your sister. It's the same in Italian. Um, I, I just came back from the supermarket. Does from actually mean from? Yes. Then in Italian, you will say da. So let's start with this. Promise me that you will accept this fact that if the English preposition that you're thinking of is being used with the proper meaning, chances are it's going to be the same. So as you're thinking in Italian, don't worry about which preposition to use because we don't have phrasal verbs in Italian. Yes. So in most cases, our prepositions make sense. It's whatever you're meaning. That's the problem that coming coming up in a second. So when it comes to tra and fra, does anybody know what's the difference between tra and fra? How can they both mean among or between? So this one is a little bit more advanced. I don't even know if you've ever been told. When do we use tra and when do we use fra? No clue. Love the honesty. <laughs> Love the honesty. No difference. 
uh, maybe context. So it's based on preference and our preference. So basically you can use either one. Nobody will ever think it's wrong. You can use one or the other. Everybody's happy. The reason we have two is because of the sound that we end up with in a sentence. So yes, Donna, based on how it sounds. Donna, you're one of my students. Did I teach you this? <laughs> so what do I mean? Let's say that I'm trying to say that something is between um, Franco and Francesca. You know, Luca is between Franco and Francesca. So will I say Luca e fra Franco e Francesca? Or would I prefer to say e tra Franco e Francesca? Be since Franco, it starts with fr, it's going to sound weird to say fra Franco. So we just say tra Franco. Uh, so taking two Italian cities, Trapani e Catania. If something is between Trapani and Catania, are we going to say fra or tra? Either one is correct, but which one are we going to say before Trapani? We're going to say fra. It sounds less silly than fr uh, tra Trapani. Tra Trapani e Catania. It's hard to say. So we will just say fra Trapani. It's still hard, but it's a little easier. So fra and tra shouldn't worry you because you choose, you choose whichever one. And if you say one that it's harder to say, it's, nobody cares. Perfetto. So we have dealt with the basic information. Now, before we get to the complicated cases and your questions, I also want to point out something that can be a problem for a learner of Italian, and that is when we combine our prepositions with the article that follows. So you may have heard things like, um, questo è il libro del ragazzo. So del, how do we get to del? Well, as you know, Italian uses the definite article, the the, a lot more than in English. So in most cases, whenever we have a noun, a word, we use the article for that word. What happens is that when you have a preposition followed by an article, we don't like to say too many words. And so we just combine them. Now, we don't do that in English. We say um, of the something, you know, on the table, at the cinema. Whereas in Italian, we just combine those. Now, I'm not going to cover all the combinations. I just realized that you saw my, <laughs> I, I, I tucked my shirt, but it doesn't look that pretty when it's on camera, right? So, um, when we I'm not going to cover all the combinations, but if you have a hard time under getting the combinations right, let me show you this. So let's take D. Like, per favore. Oh, grazie, grazie. Uh, so, D. And then we have the articles il, la, el apostrophe, and lo. And then the plural articles i, le, well, i, gli, and le. So these are the Italian articles, right? So in theory, I can combine D with any article because it could be of the girl, of the boy, of the girls, of the boys. It could be anything. Of the backpacks. So, this means that you need to know how or how to use the Atar Italian articles. Actually, I did a Q&A recently on Italian articles where I covered the basic rules of why, how do you pick one of those seven? It's not easy. So if once you know the articles, then you can combine your prepositions. Bolognesi, in mano we trust. Grazie mille, grazie a voi. Um, so how do we get from D to the other ones. Well, the D, when D combines, it becomes DE. So, if I wanted to combine D with LA, I would do, I would end up with DELLA. So DELLA means OF THE, followed by a feminine noun, so DELLA RAGAZZA. If I wanted to combine with L apostrophe, then it would be DEL, sorry, double L, <laughs> it would be DEL, dell'amico, of the friend. 
if I, if I needed to use lo as the article, dello studente. So that's how it works. And the same for plural. So dei libri of the books. Degli amici of the friends. That's because I know how to use the right article for the right word. If you don't know the articles, you're not going to get the combined prepositions. And that's okay. It's not that important, but I mean, it is important, but uh, you know, at some point you, you get there. Now, the only one that is a little bit weird is when you combine the preposition with il, it becomes, it be, it becomes del. But you will see it so often that you'll get used to it. So what have I done here? I have, um, I have highlighted in yellow all the prepositions that combine with the article. So I'm going to throw this at you and ask you, let's pretend that we are saying la, uh, la ragazza, la ragazza. So what's D plus la ragazza? If I would say of the girl, how does D, we saw that earlier, but della ragazza, Shannon, della ragazza. So how about to the girl? So what if I want to say to the girl? So the word for to is a. Uh, let's see, to the girl. Alla ragazza. Joyce, Glenn, Carol, alla ragazza. From the girl, I received a present from the girl. Ho ricevuto un regalo. Dalla ragazza, ho ricevuto un regalo dalla ragazza. Uh, now let's say, I'll change this one to lo stadio. Lo stadio, it's the stadium. So what if I want to say in the stadium? So lo stadio, how does in change? And you know, I'm not teaching you all of this, but I'm just seeing your knowledge before I prepare for your questions. Nello, so yes, in, if I could get this thing to work, becomes nello, nella, negli. So once you know the first combination, you know all of them. So there's charts everywhere that summarize them, but I think you needed to understand the concept. Su, let's say il tavolo. Per esempio, il bicchiere è on the table. So il tavolo, how would I say on the table? Sul tavolo. So su becomes sul, sulla, sullo, sui, suye. So they're kind of ugly looking words sometimes, but that's how it works. Now, per triumphra do not combine. So if I want to say for the birthday, I would say per il compleanno. If I want to say for the girl, I would say per la ragazza. In poetic Italian, there is a combination that we don't really use in speech, like pella. It's kind of ugly, so we don't, we don't do that. So I didn't highlight it. Same for tra and fra. They do not combine, so it, it would be tra il ragazzo e la ragazza, between the boy and the girl. Now, in speech, you might hear tral. Tral ragazzo. But again, it's not really prescribed. I wouldn't recommend you do it. But con is an interesting one, because con, maybe nobody told you that it actually combines because it doesn't combine in writing. So in writing, you will say con la ragazza, con la bicicletta, con il treno. So con doesn't combine, but it actually does in speech. And you will have col, meaning with the, for the masculine, con il. Vengo col treno. Vengo con la macchina. So you will hear that in speech. And I find that quite interesting. So, when do you have D in the article? Oh, great question, uh, Nicole, Nicole. So there's a peculiar usage of D, and we can start with the difficult stuff. Italian will confuse you because we have this thing that we are, they also have in, uh, in, in French, in Spanish, in other way, but Fr in French is very similar, and it's called the partitive. It's our way of rendering the idea of a, an undefined quantity. Like in English, sum. And to do that, we use D in its combined form 
but it no longer means of. So, what do you mean, Manu? What are you talking about? So, while del means of the, for example, del ragazzo means of the boy, that it belongs to the guy, right? Del ragazzo, we're cool. But what if I say something like, oh, comprato del vino. Now, that del, it doesn't mean of the wine, meaning, because it, it doesn't make sense, I bought of the wine. Like, I'm not saying that something belongs to the wine. The sentence doesn't make sense with the meaning of of. So we, Italian, use that del to mean some. Ho comprato del vino means I bought some wine. Often in English you don't actually need to say some. Uh, let's say, ho comprato dei libri. I bought books. I bought some books. I bought a few books. So, so when we, often you will see D in its combined form doesn't mean of. It doesn't specify possession anymore. You have to look at the context because the context will tell you if it makes sense that we're talking about a quantity and in many, many cases we are talking about a quantity, undefined quantity. So now, I want to ask you this because that's when it gets pretty complicated. And, uh, and that is, it's not as easy as I said at the beginning because I know you get confused. For example, why do I say vado al cinema but then I say vado in banca? Now in English you say I'm going to the cinema or to the theater and I'm going to the bank. So in, in English it'd be the same and it doesn't actually work in Italian. We use in for banca but al for cinema. So that's when it gets confusing, right? Oh yes, Meredith, the song. Sorry, yes. I was so hardly trying to avoid singing. <laughs> it's not really a song, but we remember the, the um, prepositions with a melody. We, it doesn't, it doesn't even rhyme or anything, but we say dia da in con su per tra fra. Dia da in con su per tra fra. So dia da in con su per tra fra. Doesn't really help you, but uh, yeah, it's not really a trick, but that's how we remember them as kids. Nikki, so when D is combined, it means some, not always. The context will tell you. When D is combined, it could just mean of the. In, most in many cases, it means of the. Like I said here, del ragazzo is D combined, but it just means of the boy, because, for example, uh, if I say il fratello del ragazzo, the brother, uh, the guy's brother, that, that del means of the. It's specifying the possession of the brother. So that in that case, D means D. But in other contexts, it will not mean D. Um, vuoi, um, vuoi della pasta? Would you like some pasta? It doesn't mean do you want of the pasta. But again, you can see that it cannot mean that because it would mean nothing, right? So <clears throat> you may not use it yourself, but you should be able to recognize it because it's pretty obvious that it doesn't have to do with, uh, with possession. I have a good, I see a good question from David. When is it better to use del o alcuni? So let's talk about this. We have a number of ways of saying some. And then we have the partitivo, so it's like D plus. So, they all mean some. Now, of course, we also have the colloquial stuff like un po' di, which is actually the most common one in speech. So, for example, if I want to say a few books, then I can use qualche, followed by the singular. So, qualche libro means some books, although it's plural in English, in Italian qualche only takes the singular noun to mean some. So, qualche libro, some books. Uh, alcuni libri, I'm using the masculine plural because libri is masculine plural, so alcuni libri, alcuni libri means some books. Dei libri means some books. 
e un po' di libri means some books. So which one? Now, un po' di doesn't work all the time, but I would say the most colloquial is un po' di. The second most colloquial is qualche. The third, as in, in preference, is in the, the third more common, so it's like, it's, big, it's going from very common to less common, it's the partitivo. In speech, it's easier to say qualche libro than dei libri, which is more common. So the partitivo would be the third option, and alcuno, alcuni, is hardly ever said in speech, unless you're speaking very proper, so it's mostly used in writing, okay? Mary. Vorrei qualche mela. I'd like a few apples or some apples. Yes, esatto. So this helps you with this. Now let me go back to what I was talking about, if I remember, which was... There is, a, there is usually confusion in Italian between... With these prepositions here, let me tell you. These are the messy ones. Would you agree that di, da, in are the ones that trick you? The other ones kind of work most of the time. Yes, Sandra, I'm back. I'm back to that topic, the, the topic of banca and so on. So, it's not easy to give you rules on when we use D, sorry, when we use E, A, and when we use in. But there are guidelines. There are guidelines to help you get it right most of the time or more of the time. So, We use a whenever the movement is towards a city or whenever the et or to is in relation to a city. So, for example, I would say vado a Milano, vado a New York. I'm not, I'm not going to say vado in Milano, vado in New York. So, if it's a city, you're going to use a all the time. Now, there are exceptions with cities that are countries like vado a Singapore, is, I would not say vado in Singapore because but Singapore is a country, but yeah. So anyway, let's go with a if you're going towards the city. We also use a, uh, we use a in some expressions that I just want you to memorize. For example, a lavoro, a scuola, a casa. These are so common that you will say so often that you will never have a problem with vado a casa. You're not going to say vado in casa, vado a casa, a casa. Al lavoro, a scuola, al cinema, a teatro, al supermercato. So I want you to think of those as like a bunch of rules, exceptions, that's what it is. Here's another one. Al mare, al mare. So this is the kind of broad rule of when you would use a, when you're moving towards a city. When you move towards a country or a state, you will use in. Vado in Pennsylvania. Abito in Italia. Lavoro in Australia. So before countries or states, you are going to use in, again, most of the time. For example, gli Stati Uniti, the United States, starts with the United States. So it's gli Stati Uniti, so you would say uh, vado negli Stati Uniti, St negli Stati Uniti. Now, regions also use in, but sometimes it's a little bit uh, difficult, but I just saw in Liguria. Yeah, if I vado in Liguria, o abito in Liguria, if I go or live in Liguria, which is an Italian region, so yes. In works for those. Now, there's also um, a bunch of expressions that I think you can just get familiar with. For example, in spiaggia. It's another way of talking to the beach, about the beach. So, vado in spiaggia is I'm going to the beach. So, you can say vado al mare or vado in spiaggia. Another one that it's always in is in montagna. In montagna. Uh, on the mountains. Another one is in vacanza, on holiday or on vacation. So these are, I just want you to just familiarize yourself with them and learn them. Uh, Noreen, abito a Santa Barbara. Santa Barbara is a suburb or a town, so we we're going to use a. Santa Barbara. 
Uh, Mary, another one, in albergo. Okay, so, but what, is there a, a guideline? So why do I say, for example, uh, vado in banca, but then vado al supermercato? Here's the idea that doesn't quite always make sense, but it can help you. In Italian, we're going to use in whenever the movement is towards a, an enclosed building that you are going to enter. So, the bank. You go into the bank, right? So, we're going to say vado in banca. The post office. You go into the post office, so vado in posta. The gelateria, the ice cream place. Vado in gelateria. Oh, Diane, we, we said at the same time. Vado in gelateria. In palestra. In piscina, because you get into the swimming pool. Now, this is the overarching rule that overrules the things that I've said about the exceptions. Because, like, you know, Manu, the cinema is enclosed. Yeah, but was it always enclosed? Maybe it was an open place. The market, yes, it's an enclosed place, but was it always a, a, an enclosed place? No, markets were open, right? So maybe that's why we don't use in for those ones. I don't have a real explanation. So, uh, but I think this will help you. Now, if you're a little bit more advanced, there is a little tricky part. What I say, I will say, vado in uh, farmacia. So vado in farmacia. Are you okay with what it means? Vado in farmacia. So I'm going to put it on my slide while you tell me what it means. Vado in farmacia. So, oh, I see other questions that I'll try and get to in a minute. So, vado in farmacia, I am going to the pharmacy, I'm going to the chemist. In makes sense because you go into the, ph the pharmacy. So in Italian, we will say in. But I'm sure that you probably have heard somebody say, vado alla farmacia. So which one is it? Manu, you're saying that the correct one is in. Well, didn't say it was the correct one, it was the common one. So we are going to switch from in to a if we're talking about a specific place. So what's the difference between vado in farmacia it just means I'm going to the chemist. But if I say vado alla farmacia, it's implied that you and me know which one I'm talking about. It's the one down the road. It's the one where my sister works. For example, vado alla farmacia dove lavora Francesca. So I'm going to the pharmacy where she works. So I'm being specific. So here's another one. Vado in biblioteca. Oh, vado in biblioteca. And the difference with vado alla biblioteca nazionale. So what's the difference? So normally I would say vado in biblioteca because you go into. But if I say la biblioteca nazionale, that's the national library. There's only one. There's only one in Rome, right? There's not five international li um, No, national, not international. So it didn't sound right. There's only one national library in I think in Italy, I don't know, uh, but definitely in Rome. So, vado alla biblioteca nazionale because now I'm being specific about which biblioteca I'm going to. So, like I said, this is more advanced and you can totally live without this. For me, it's more important that you understand the tendency to use in for places that you go into. Now, uh, Terry, when, when do we need article with in and with uh, a? With a? Unless it's a city or a person, you're going to use the article in most cases. Uh, vado uh, al supermercato. You know, vado alla farmacia di Marco. So I will always combine with the article in almost never. So I would say just go with that. It doesn't combine when it's used as the preposition of the movement. So I'm not going to say vado nella biblioteca. Nella, I think in combines with the article when it means inside. Ho messo il telefono nello zaino. Because I put the phone inside the backpack. So if in means inside, that's when it combines. That's my, that's my sensation. That's what I feel. And probably, probably I'm right. 
Now, this is a huge lesson. We have 195 people on YouTube plus around 60 on Facebook. That's pretty good. I hope this is being helpful. Now, let's go back to the other problem. So let's say that we have sorted out the A and the E. Let's pretend that we've sorted it out. But now we still have a problem with these three. A, da, and in are again are still confusing. Do you does any do you folks get it wrong sometimes and, and you get corrected and you're not sure why? Because yeah, uh, a, da, and in are very confusing. Christy, glad I was help, I was helpful. Grazie mille. Damien, all the time. Yes, these are tough. And, but again, let's go back to what I said earlier. With their own actual meaning, just use them safely. If you want to specify uh, belonging, like a possession, uh, D. If you want to say to or at, like so movement towards something, then you're going to say A. If you mean from, you're going to say Da. You know, if you bring something from Italy, oh, let's... I have something that I brought from Australia. Ho portato questo quala dall'Australia. I say dalla because country names have articles. So it's, it comes from Australia, so I'm going to say da. So don't doubt what is certainly correct and obvious, I'm going to say. The problem with da, i, and da is with verbs of movement. Oh, it's Susan, I saw your question and I will talk about that. And Nick as, as well. You got all the right questions. You got all the right questions. It's going to be a long, long lesson. So let me get some air conditioning here. So when, when do a, die and in become confusing? With verbs of movement. For example, Frank, I saw your comment of torno dal comandante when you're going back to the commander. So why are you saying da? So he is because tornare has movement when you're returning to somebody or you're going. So think of this verbs of movement. That's when this gets crazy. And here's how it works. As I said earlier, you're going to use a if the movement is towards a city or a, or a suburb or all those exceptions like casa, uh, cinema, like those ones. So it's going to be something like uh, vado al cinema, vado a casa, torno a casa, uh, vengo a casa, uh, vengo a Roma. So if it's one of those, ah, makes sense. Don't doubt it. In kicks in for the other things that I said earlier. So uh, vengo in Italia. I'm coming to Italy, whereas in English you'd say to Italy, would say in, because it's a country. So movement towards a country is in. Torno in Italia, I'm getting back to Italy. Um, so, andiamo in spiaggia. That's because spiaggia is one of those exceptions. So that still applies, but what's da? Why are we using da? And here's the easy answer that some of you probably know, obviously. Whenever the movement is towards a person. We don't use a, we use da. And this will confuse the heck out of you because da means from. So, but if I say vado da, vado dal dottore, I am going to the doctor. Now the doctor is a person, it's not a place. Although when I say vado dal dottore, I'm talking about the place, but grammatically speaking, I'm going to the person or the person's place. So, vado dal dottore. Technically, I'm saying from, but we don't look at it that way. That's movement towards a person. Uh, Bolognesi, vado da Marco. Vado da Marco. I'm going to Marco's place. Now, if you know French, it's the same as the che, chez moi, chez toi, to somebody's place. So, sometimes you don't even realize that that's why it's happening. But for example, I would say vado in farmacia, but I would say vado dal farmacista, because the pharmacist is the person. Ma Mary, brava. Uh, dove sta? Vado 
dal meccanico, because the mechanic is the person. Now, if I used another expression, if I, if I said, I'm going to the workshop or something, I don't even have the word right now <laughs> in Italian for that. But yeah, then I would use a or in, but my sentence has the person's name or profession, and so it's going to be da with the, prepos with the article. So, Jamila, vado dal dentista. Now, it doesn't have the article when you're going to a person, name. So, un pe people's names don't have articles, unless you're in the northeast of Italy, uh, or north in general, but we don't say il mano, we just say mano. So, if you're going to Manu's place, vado da Manu. New subscriber! Oh, by the way, I get so involved in this that I forget to ask you to give this video, a, you know, a like and a subscribe if, you have, if you're not subscribed. But my, channel, my guess is that you are subscribed because how, how else would you know that we are live? So, uh, vado dalla nonna. Vado dalla nonna. I'm going to grandma because grandma is a person. So while your instinct is to say a, because you're moving towards a person, you're going to say da. That's basically it. Now, there was another question that I, I saw that was very important and it's kind of tricky, but you might say, but Manu, I've heard things uh, like, um, abito da sera like an evening dress, an evening gown, abito da sera. I've heard things like, uh, I don't know, uh, camera da letto, the bedroom, camera da letto. What's that da? Why are we using da? But then we have things like la lista dei prezzi. Actually, I'm going to type all this because I can see how this can be confusing. <laughs> so, all right, just give me a second. So we say things like camera da letto for bedroom. We say uh, abito da sera. I might make my font a little smaller so that it doesn't take up so much space. Okay, abito da sera. But then we say things like, uh, I don't know, la lista dei prezzi. or il capo dell'ufficio, the office's boss. Occhiali da sole, yes, all those, all those expressions that kind of use these random prepositions, how is that, why? Again, these are, these are things that you just, you know, if you're learning the word for bedroom, then you'll say it's camera da letto and then you memorize it. But if you are asking yourself, why? I can help you a little bit so that you can maybe guess things a little bit better. This is due to the fact that in Italian, there's one thing that you can do in English that it's so cool that we cannot do in Italian. In English, you can take two nouns, put them together, and the first noun works as an adjective of the second. For example, um, well, evening dress. Evening is a thing. It's the evening. It's a thing. It's not an adjective. But then you put it before dress, which is another thing, another noun, and then evening becomes an adjective of dress. So it's a dress for the evening, right? Same for, for bedroom. Bed is a thing and room is a thing. You put them together and you have something cool that we cannot do in Italian. So you will never have in Italian something like letto camera or sera abito or things like that. So il capo dell'ufficio, the boss of the office, in English, you would say the boss man, the office manager. Then you take office and you put it as an adjective of manager and then you're done. We can't do that. We cannot do that. Uh, I wish it could be cool, but so this mess here happens because we have to find a way to do the same thing. So here's the explanation a little bit. We tend to use da between the two words. So first of all, camera da letto. We put the main word, like what is it? When I say camera da letto, I'm not talking about a room or a bed. I'm talking about a room. So we're going to put the main word first, whereas in English you put second, that, you know, it's a bedroom. In Italian we put room first because this is a room. Evening dress, what is it? Is it an evening or is it a dress? It's a dress, so we'll put dress first. So that's the first thing. 
you're going to put the main noun. What is it first? And the reason we use da, that da creates this phrase, this little compound thing, where da means that the first word functions as the second word, or the first word is used so that or for the second thing. I'll give you a few more. Um, for example, oh, I don't know what that was. Tavola da stiro. Or that's your ironing board. Or ferro da stiro. Ferro da stiro. So it's, when I say tavola da stiro, it's a board that we use for ironing. Ferro da stiro. It's an iron, no longer, but it's an iron that we use for uh, ironing. Again, abito da sera. It's a dress that we use for the evening. So if the first word ex uh, tells you why, what it's for, and the second word is what it's for, then we're going to use da. Uh, grazie, Andrea. I see a very good one. Tazzina da caffè. Caffè with the right accent. I can't do that. But yeah, it's a coffee cup. Tazzina da caffè. Because it's the tazza. It's a cup that we use for coffee. Uh, Jennifer, occhiali da sole. It's uh, glasses for the sun. So that, oh, vino da tavola. You folks are amazing. Bravissimi studenti. So that's the idea. That's the idea. I realized that you can see my microphone a little bit. All right, too late now. So this is the idea of da. We are going to use D when there's an explanation. So think about, in English you say price list. Again, you have two nouns. Price is a, is a noun, it's a thing, and list is a thing. In English, you can say price list and you're done. In Italian, we cannot do that. So we have to say it's the list of the prices because it's the list of, it actually specifies it's a list of what. Do you have more examples with D that I, can, I can't think of any now? Nick, I like yours, tavola da surf. Tavola da surf, it's a board that we use for surfing. Do you have examples for... Um, for D, so la lista dei prezzi. Ah, oh. okay, here's another one. Silly one, but it's regalo di Natale. In English, you say it's a Christmas present. We, ca we can't do that, so we have to say that it's a present. Well, uh, it's uh, of Christmas, it doesn't make sense now, because you say it's a present for Christmas, Manu. But yeah, I can say regalo per Natale. But if I'm talking about here, a bought of Christmas present, then we're going to use D. Oh, Joyce Latino, I like what you brought up, maybe unintentionally, but... <laughs> che differenza c'è? What's the difference? Tazzina da caffè and tazzina di caffè. Tazzina da caffè, tazzina di caffè. Oh, I see carta di identità. La carta di identità is your ID. It's your carta, it's your document of identity. Perfetto. So, be careful with the D and the DA because tazzina da caffè refers, it's one word. It's like it refers to an object that it's called tazzina da caffè because it's a cup used for coffee. When you say tazzina di caffè, you are being explicit. It's a, cu it's a cup filled with coffee. It's a cup of coffee. Same as English, actually. It's a cup of coffee. Or well, it's a coffee cup, but it's a cup of coffee. It's a cup of tea. So that's the difference between da and di when used in those phrases. Perfetto. Ooh. I am cooked. Sono distrutto. Sono esausto. Now, are there any more questions relating to prepositions? I know, you know, it's a, it's a monster of a topic. We can never cover the whole thing and uh we still have huge numbers 211 people on youtube plus another 50 or 60 on facebook and i'm vediamo uh elenco di attesa uh, lista d'attesa yes lista di attesa lista d'attesa waiting list uh carta di credito yeah it's a credit card but it's a card that's, 
it's used, no, it's not used, but it's a, it's a uh, this one doesn't make sense. <laughs> Come on, it's not gonna work all the time. Uh, I'm just trying to give you guidelines. Prepositions are a beast and um, I, I feel your pain, just like we suffer, we as I say like non-English speakers, we suffer with your horrible phrasal verbs. That's your punishment for having phrasal verbs in English. Now, Damien, do I cover prepositions in beginner courses? Yes, I think we cover basic prepositions in beginner Italian level one, and then the combined prepositions in beginner Italian level two, I think. But if you go to the website, we're still, we actually, we're in between websites. So we've launched one part of the new website, but it's still sending some pages are still from the old website. So it's still not very clear what each course has, but yeah, if you go to the course, you will be able to see the curriculum and open every lesson and see what we teach. So uh, one other thing that I want to say, and maybe I then maybe we're done and it's kind of sad news, but good news. But Bene, as, as always, the first Thursday of each month, we go live with Cafe Italiano, which is our talk show, game show, 100% in Italian, they have, that becomes subtitled after a few days and those are fun, we get to play together, it's all in Italian, I help you understand what I'm saying, you come no matter what your level is. We used to do, we've been doing these Q and A's on the last Thursday of the month, but this is the last one. This is the last one, but not because I don't want to help you anymore, I just want to help you better. And I realized that when we do a live stream and I answer 720 questions, that video does, it's not useful for other students who weren't live watching it because, because the, the title of the video cannot have all the things that I answered. Uh, and so I need, I, I want to, I want to create something that helps as many people as possible. And, and, and you know, um, the best thing that we've ever done at Italy Made Easy has been Ask Manu Italiano. That's how we probably made friends three years ago. We were publishing one cafe, uh, Ask Manu Italiano a week where I answered your questions one at a time. So that video can then be titled, you know, the difference between D and Da, and then everybody can find it. And, and I think it's just a lot more useful. So what are we going to do now? Are you ready? Pronti? As of now, I don't know when I'll stop publishing the video, but I've we're bringing back uh, Ask Manu Italiano. Yes, Ask Manu Italiano is going, is going to be back and I need your questions. So if you go to italymedisi.com slash askmanu, all one word, askmanu, askmanu as I say. So if somebody can type it, uh, italymedisi.com slash askmanu, you will be able to submit your question. Now we are taking voice questions. If you don't know what Cafe Itali uh, Ask Manu Italiano, it was a really cool show and it started with me playing your question. Like I really want, I want to, I want to engage with you a lot more. So, so you send the question. If it's picked, I create a whole lesson explaining your doubt. And yeah, in the video, we'll play your question. So go to that page. If you want to submit the question, I can't promise that I will answer all of them. There's going to be hundreds, but if you want a tip, since you're here, pick a question that is not just yours. Like, you know, if it's specific about my family is from Latina and I want to know where they live, like <laughs> pick something that is kind of useful for more people, then we'll more likely to pick it. Grazie mille a tutti. Mary, you are fabulous. You are fabulous. We are still doing the Cafe, uh, the Cafe Italiano con Manu. The first Thursday of every month, that show is in Italian. Also, we are coming back with the podcast. We've taken a big six month break, but we're coming back with the podcast. And again, the podcast is 100% in Italian. And the good part is that with the new website, each podcast episode will have its own page, its own player and its own PDF to download. And the PDF has comprehension questions, has, um, I forgot what, what we give, we give you a lot of stuff with each podcast. So it's going to be just, it's going to be helpful for you. Oh, transcription, that's what it has. It has the transcription so you can read along, you can translate it, you can do all sorts of things and you can learn with the free podcast. Uh, so that's all. I think that's all. Since I'm here, I'm going, I remember to ask you to like the video, <laughs> share it if you think it was useful to other people. And um, 
And that's it, see? Um, let's switch to this. E noi ci vediamo presto. So I'll see you, I'll see you next week, I think, or whenever it is for, uh, for Caffè Italiano. And then I will see you with Ask Manu soon. And I'll see you at itremedici.com, okay? Un bacione, vi penso sempre, always thinking of you, just want to help you so 